Welcome to the shop, my friends. If you're here because you want to maximize your prop making abilities while also getting muscles like this, you are in the right spot because SKS wants to bump you up. And that's about all of that, that I'm going to do. So in today's build video, we are gonna be making some fake dumbbells. And this all came about because about a year ago, I was diagnosed with having very high blood pressure, high cholesterol, I was overweight. And since that point, I've been trying to better myself both mentally and physically. And because of that, I was on the internet last week looking for some heavier weights for in-home. And I ran across this entire thing about influencers using fake weights in their workout videos, which I thought was very interesting and you might go give it a look. But I thought it'd be a fantastic opportunity to make a project for cosplayers, especially with photo shoots or at conventions. And so I decided I was gonna make some fake weights because once I looked up the prices of fake weights, they are ridiculous. You could definitely make them on your own. Now, with the weights I decided to make, these are pretty realistic. I wanted to keep them within the 10 pound and five pound plates. Um, I didn't wanna go too over the top, but of course you can make these whatever size you want. I also wanted a very realistic paint job to them. And I feel that from a distance, these things look legit. So I wanna show you what it takes to put together your own fake set of dumbbells and to paint it to a realistic sheen. Let's go ahead and get started. I brought some weights in the shop so I could figure out the basic sizes for the weights I wanted to create. To make 10 pound plates, I'm gonna take part A and trace that onto some 10 millimeter foam. I'm then gonna cut out squares that are slightly larger than this shape. When two of the part A sections are glued together, this is gonna be the right diameter and thickness to simulate a 10 pound plate. I'm gonna need eight plates in total, so 16 squares are gonna be cut out. To glue all the stacked foam together, I'm gonna to be using Weldwood contact cement. Weldwood contact cement is a little bit thinner than some of the other brands, so I applied two thin coats. After the contact cement has dried and become tacky, I could then press all of the foam pieces together. With all the foam glued together, it's now time to take the template and cut out the circles. Using a circle jig that I made for my bandsaw makes quick work of this process. But if you don't have a bandsaw, it's no problem. You can cut these out by hand as well. And if you do have a bandsaw and you want to make your own circle jig, be sure to check out that video on my channel. And I know not everybody has these types of tools, but I've got to build fast to get the videos out, so I use what's around. With all my large circles cut out, it's now time to take part B and cut out smaller squares to make the five pound plates. The process was then repeated of gluing these 10 millimeter squares together and cutting out the smaller circles on my bandsaw. To get the hole in the middle of the circle, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch Forstner bit on my drill press. And again, if you don't have a drill press, it's no problem. You could do this using a hand drill. When you do use the Forstner bit, make sure you have a scrap piece of 10 millimeter foam underneath. This is gonna help with tear out. With all my holes drilled, it's now time to work on the handle. And for this, I'm gonna use a three quarter inch PVC pipe. The pipe is marked and then cut to length and I make sure that I have enough room on either side for the plates. You could of course change the overall length of this depending on how much weight you would like to add. I now need to start making the inside and outside caps. These are gonna be two inch circles, two out of six millimeter foam and two out of 10 millimeter foam. The six millimeter cap will go on the inside of the stack plates. While the 10 millimeter cap will be on the outside of the five pound plate. Part E is gonna be cut out of 10 millimeter foam. These are gonna make the handle caps for the ends. It's now time to get rid of all the sharp edges. So I use a smooth sanding drum on my rotary tool to knock down the foam. I can then soften this transition even more by using a sanding sponge. It's now time to heat seal the foam by lightly applying heat to the surface. This is gonna help close the pores and make the foam extremely smooth.
I decided I wanted some branding on the side, so I used my Glowforge on some 4mm foam. Now if you don't have a laser cutter, it's no problem. You can buy foam letters and numbers in just about any craft store. I want to make sure that the letters are spaced just right, so I drew a basic template onto the foam using a pencil. From there I could put down the letters exactly where they needed to go and then glue down each individual letter with some super glue. HD power baby for those massive cosplay gains. I'd like to give the surface a cast iron texture so I'm going to use a stone bit on my rotary tool. This is as simple as pressing the foam into the bit again and again and again. But luckily I only needed to do this to the surface of the outside plates. The inside plates I just had to do the texture along the ring. Once I was okay with how the textures look I had to heat seal the foam one more time. It's now time to glue the plates together. Using some super glue and the handle, it helped me easily line up where each one needed to go. With the plates attached, I could also glue the interior cap to the inside. This process was then repeated for the other stack of plates. With the handle inserted, I could then attach the 5 pound plates to the end, as well as the 10 millimeter cap. With the stacked weight plates glued together, it's now time to address the grip of the handle. To give the handle some texture and build it up, I'm going to be using some self-adhering athletic tape. The end of the tape is super glued to the PVC pipe and then it's wrapped around multiple times till I get the desired thickness. The tape can then be cut and rolled to secure it into place. I could then take the Part E 10mm handle caps and glue them on the ends. Because these are fixed plate rack dumbbells, the overall weight is designated on the end and it does not have a screw clamp. But you of course could change all of that on your build. It's now time to prime and paint our weights to make them look realistic. And I start by covering the self-adhering tape with a paper towel. This is going to help protect it from the two light coats of Plasti Dip. After the Plasti Dip has been applied, it's left to dry before I add my Rust-Oleum Flat Antique Nickel. And I apply it a little bit thicker than normal because I'm not worried about the foam flexing or cracking. To up the overall believability, I'm going to add a layer of graphite powder using a shop towel. This powder will adhere really well and it's going to help fill in all those pores to give us a really smooth surface. The powder is also applied and buffed on the edges of the weight plate and to the back side. And here it really shows the difference between the non-treated and the treated surface.
Now graphite powder can rub off, so we're going to seal this layer using some Valspar gloss. Now again, I'm not worried about the foam flexing or cracking, so we can apply it a little bit thicker than normal. And the gloss on top really adds to the believability by reflecting all the lights around the room. Now it's time to add some paint to the lettering to mimic what you'd see in the gym. And to do this I'm going to use some Angelus flat white leather paint. I removed the gloss spray from the lettering using some very fine sandpaper. This is going to help the paint stick better to the surface. Using a detail brush I hit the top of each letter and number with the flat paint. For the weight caps, I decide to use a little bit of rub and buff, that way it'll separate them from the plates. The rub and buff is applied with a Q-tip, that way I don't get it on any of the other surfaces. And once the wax has been applied, I can buff it with a paper towel to get it to a higher metallic sheen. I also use the tiniest bit of rub and buff on the paper towel as an edge highlight. I definitely did not want to overdo this and it's really only picked up in the photographs. So you little girly prop makers can see what it takes to make your own set of fake dumbbells. And I really enjoyed this project. I thought it was a challenge to make something look realistic, but be extremely light. These are 90 pounds, right? But they're actually one pound seven ounces, which is nothing. These are fantastic for stunt dumbbells in a movie or photo shoots out at your convention. So if you are building any of my builds or utilizing HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.